So there's a major problem with distance education or e-learning. It's difficult to create what feels like an authentic educational experience. It doesn't feel real. There are too many computers and wires separating the student from the content, the teacher, and other students. But there's help to overcome this through applying the three energies of e-learning, which is an application of Garrison's theory of the community of inquiry. There are many crossovers of what makes a good face-to-face -face class that also makes a good online class. Studies show online classes are at least equal and sometimes better when it comes to outcomes. I'm not here to evangelize e-learning, but here's the deal. E-learning seems to be here to stay. It's no longer a question of if anymore, but when most learning will be online. It's no longer should we, but we are and we will, especially now. So let's forget online or not online. Here's the real pedagogical question we should be asking right now. What makes for a great educational experience? Think back to one of the best learning experiences that you had in the classroom. What made it so? I know for me, the examples are vastly different from a great hands-on physics class in high school where every lesson was tactile to a large lecture hall in graduate school where we never knew what the nutty professor was going to say next to a small literature class around a table where the professor spoke so quietly that we had to lean in to hear. There are no cookie cutter great classes, but we can ask the question of these and your own classes. How does quality learning happen? Often we spend our time comparing face-to-face -face learning with online learning, and there's many, many ways we can compare and contrast them. But let's ask the question, how does real learning happen? How does it happen online? Here's a hint. It doesn't typically just happen. It's part of a string of intentional, thoughtful actions by a teacher who cares about learning and about the students themselves and their outcomes. But here's our big challenge. It's one thing to do this if we can see the students face to face, but how do we create a great educational experience online? For help, we're going to get into some theory to guide our way. The community of inquiry theory helps understand what makes a great educational experience. Here's how it works. Garrison, Anderson, and Archer separate the classroom environment, the sum of all the interactions, into three beings, a trinity if you would, called a community of inquiry. First, there's the cognitive. Second, the social. And third, the teaching presence. With the cognitive presence, it's the space in which the student engages with the material, the content, has a, some level of sense of puzzlement about it. There's information exchange, connecting ideas, and applying new ideas. In the social presence, here's where expression happens, encouraging, collaboration, discourse, discussion, and uh, collaborative arguments. In the teaching, this is where the teaching presence uh, initiates, facilitates discussion topics, focuses, shares meaning. All of this combines into an educational experience where learning occurs within the classroom community through the interaction of these three core elements. This has been called a community of inquiry. Each presence brings an energy or lack of energy to a classroom. It's not just a static being in a room. Do you camp? I've been camping my whole life, but sometimes I am befuddled by why some campfires work and some don't. But I know scientifically that a fire is about three things, about the fuel, about the oxygen, and about a spark. So let's picture our class or a course or community of learning as a campfire. First, we have the cognitive presence, the fuel, what is consumed, and really usually why you are there in the classroom. Second, we have the student social activity within it, the oxygen, the breath, the response. A class without social presence is lifeless. And then you have the teaching presence. This is the spark. How can you get the class engaged, motivated, activated? And all of these come together into an authentic and active learning experience. Each presence, the three beings or actors in this trio, brings an energy. This is what I'm calling the three energies of e-learning. And it's not e-learning specific, of course. You have the interaction between the social presence and the cognitive, the social and the teaching, the teaching and the cognitive. Let's talk about each specific element in the campfire. You have heard that content is king. But content is not everything. However, have you ever tried to light a fire with unseasoned wet wood? When I can't get a fire going, that's usually the first thing I blame, right or wrong. In the cognitive presence, 
This is where the students engage with and apply new ideas through lectures and slides, multimedia, readings, online discussions, and student-created content. But have you ever tried to start a fire with maybe too many logs and not enough oxygen? What did you do? Maybe spread out the logs a little bit, allow some space, some room for it to breathe. This is the social presence where students engage through access. Access is really important to know that all of your students, no matter what their abilities, are able to access the content. Asynchronous discussions, synchronous classes, office hours, study sessions, which can be really important for students to connect with one another. Student-to-student -student interactions. What aspects of your weekly class schedule allow students to connect with one another? And maybe some water cooler talk. Do you ever recognize that in the online classroom, there are no hallways, there's no before or after class for the students to be able to talk with one another? And this is where perhaps a water cooler, a virtual water cooler, like a discussion board, where students can just talk about whatever. And thirdly, you could have all uh, the best logs, you can have all the oxygen, but unless there's a spark, there will not be a fire. And this is the teaching presence. The teacher is that spark in the online classroom. Think back to your great learning experiences or those of your colleagues. There was usually a teacher involved who knew how to light the spark. In the online class, the teacher moves from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. The teacher becomes the facilitator of investigation, discovery, and the creation of knowledge. Some of the actions, facilitation through focused questions, meaning making, spotlighting. Spotlighting is when you identify certain areas of the content or reading or videos that you've shown to focus on for the students. Correcting, assessing, which is very important online and face-to-face, -to, -face, to assess the learning of the students. Modifying. Modifying can happen at any point in the semester, but Remember, as a teacher, one of the ways that you can respond to your students' learning is by modifying your instruction to better suit the students' needs at the time. And challenging. Sometimes it's difficult to challenge students, and online it can be difficult to know how to, how to manage uh, challenging in a positive way. But challenging is so important to identify gaps in student learning and to challenge ideas and assumptions, even from the opposite standpoint. And respecting. When the teacher respects, they create a safe space for all students to come, no matter what their beliefs are, their background, or their culture, or their approaches to life, and allow them to come into the safe space to learn and to grow. So, as a review, strengthening these three energies in the classroom, the cognitive presence, the social presence, and the teaching presence, will combine to create a powerful and a unique educational experience. So which energy do you think is needed most? Well, I think that online we're doing pretty well with content. We know how to create the content that students can download as well as the world is full of content. They have content in their phones and all this knowledge is available to them. And obviously the student presence is absolutely essential, but often their attitudes and their actions are out of our control in terms of focus. What we can control is the teaching presence. When I think of this, I think about the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We can't often change the content that comes to us through curriculum or through uh, the online class that we're teaching. Uh, we really can't change our students. They're coming to us as they are, and, and we can change them a certain amount throughout the class, and hopefully they will learn their uh, what it is that they've come to learn and meet their objectives. But really what we can focus on is ourselves, the teaching presence. Often we think about the lecture aspect of teaching, this very heavy cognitive authority. But these days that's not really what is needed in the online classroom. As I've said, this move from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. But there are really too many online classes that are being created and quote-unquote taught but all the class consists of is content access. Teachers aren't curating. They're not guiding. They don't have a presence there. They don't show up. There's no spark. What we need is more humanity in our technology, less silicon, more skin, fewer bullet points, more stories, 
a lower number of guidelines, more heart, especially, especially during this time. Teachers who inspire, light fires, fewer logs, more lighter fluid and matches. Is communication that ignites. This is my one big tip. In e-learning, it's easy to under-communicate. It's difficult to over-communicate. So what's your plan for communication in your classroom? Uh, my first step would be to send an announcement out to welcome the students, just as you would in the physical classroom. And then tell your students your communication plan. How often are you going to email? What kind of ways are you going to announce to the students? How often can they expect emails back from you when they ask questions? And then throughout the course, um, use emails and uh, also synchronous ways of, of video to check in, to give feedback, to give corrections, to challenge, to guide, to help, apply. All of these are based on communication by the teacher, and it's important to do it in every way possible to connect with our students. The mind is not a vessel that needs filling, but wood that needs igniting. What fires will you light in your next online class? And my hope for you is that you won't just settle for second best, but that you will come into your online class with a strong teaching presence that lights fires, that thinks about the students first, and uh, ignites these fires that creates a true learning experience. Thanks for joining me. Here are a few of my resources for further reading. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have questions or comments below.